Here are the nails that I will be using to make my nail crosses. You can see I let these outside for seven days to rust. Okay, uh, so they could receive the energies of the sun and the moon. Here's another batch that I'm doing the same way, the same thing. And what I did is I just added tap water and holy water. And let them outside for seven days to receive both the energies of the sun and the moon for seven days. And you can see they're nice and rusty. So I'm just leaving the nails uh, in a corner where the eastern sun rises and consecrates them. I bless them and I consecrate them with the energies, well first of all the energies of the sun and the moon, but also with water and fire. Uh, so you can see they're all going to be consecrated. It's a beautiful full moon out tonight, and you can see the full moon right here, and over here you see Jupiter. And it's a very beautiful full moon to consecrate the nails. You can see Jupiter right here. So last night was the night of the full moon and I blessed half of these with the fire. Tonight is the night of uh, Walpurgis or May's Eve. And so now I'm gonna do the second half. These have been, you can see, they're nice and rusty, but I want this red color. So tonight on May's Eve, I'm gonna do this other half because I want them color right here and I'll get them done tonight so tonight is May's Eve and this is my second night doing this and I'm gonna get these nice and burnt and then I just got one last batch for tomorrow now with each batch of the nails I'm doing this for three nights I let them burn. You can probably hear them sizzling until they completely go out and then I'm finished. So the following day, here are the nails. I like this nice red color that they came out. You can see I finished them. Now I have a third batch that I'm going to do tonight. I won't record that. A little bit thicker than these right here. And I'll probably get this one done tonight. And they're just sitting in the holy water and regular water. And I'm just gonna get those done tonight. Today is May 1st. Get those done tonight. And right now they're just sitting in water. And hopefully they'll come out like this nice rusty red color. So before I continue with the video I want to show you that in front of my house 
I have this iron, I guess, wind chime. And there's a reason why I'm recording this. There's an iron wind chime in front of my house. And in the bottom, I have some iron. There should be some iron nails in here somewhere. But I have iron to protect. This is the front of the house. Now let me show you the back. And you can see this is rusted iron. So in the back of my house, I also have this, uh, iron pentacle with little iron bells, nice and rusty. And if we go down here, by my door, I have iron spikes that I collect and I use in my spiritual working. Now there's a reason why I have this. So here are my iron nails after I blessed and consecrate them. And you can see these are thicker and now they're starting to dry. These are a little bit much darker. And they're still drying. But when they get dry, they're going to be this nice red color right here, which is similar to this one right here. So people are wondering, why am I making a video on iron nails or iron in general? So the reason why I'm making this video on iron is because iron is one of the oldest uh, metals used in magical practices around the world. In most cultures around the world, iron is a metal used for protection, not just only for protection, but also for warding off negative spirits, but also for binding spirits. And you'll see this uh, in most cultures around the world. So it's a natural metal from the earth used you know, around the world in every culture against witchcraft, against uh, malignant black magic, against elemental spirits, against evil witches, against uh, wandering spirits. It's, uh, so you'll see this occurring in most cultures around the world. So as an amulet, iron is used generally for binding and for controlling. And just like I just mentioned, it's, it's used for controlling witchcraft and binding elemental spirits, but it's also used to keep uh, earthbound or restless spirits at bay, uh, elemental spirits at bay from a person or a location. And you will see this occurring in all cultures around the world, the similar, similar practices and beliefs of the use of iron. Iron has both a positive or protective energy as well as a disruptive destructive energy uh, for every positive there is its negative everything that has a positive energy has a negative energy fire can cook your food but if not used wisely it can burn your house so for every positive there is its destructive energy and iron has that those same qualities especially when it comes to magic and it's for this reason that iron is used both in malignant malignant or malevolent magic black magic as well as protective or positive magic so there's a reason why in the olden days, caskets were uh, made, well, of course, with wood, but the wood was binded together with iron, you know, the olden caskets when someone was buried, because it was believed that the iron would keep the restless or the wandering spirits trapped in within a casket of those spirits of people who died maybe in a, in a, in a dreadful way, murderers, rapists. And then it just became a popular culture around the world to just use iron uh, when making caskets. But it is used or it was used in the construction of caskets because it, it really did keep the restless and wandering spirits trapped within uh, the boxes. If you ever go to old cemeteries, you will often see that in the cemeteries, they have an iron gate or a gate made with iron. This was also the same purpose. It was used to keep those restless or those wandering spirits trapped within a cemetery. Uh, and also, if you go to churches, old churches had iron gates around the, 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 
the church ground uh, for the same reason. This would keep malignant or wandering spirits from entering into uh, the church ground, the church grounds, and protecting that sacred area. So iron is used in in that sense to protect, uh, to keep wandering spirits trapped, uh, lower level energies or lower level entities trapped in a location, in an area, or from entering into a place. You will often see iron in a lot of protective amulets, in amulets for protection. Remember that iron has both a positive and a disruptive energy, so it is often used to protect from that which it represents. You know, you fight fire with fire. So early Christians, or actually a lot of Christians, they often use, you will see them use, uh, or carry three nails as an amulet. These three nails represent the three nails that were used to crucify uh, Jesus. So often you will see Christians or Catholics or they will carry three nails in a flannel bag. This is good uh, for protection against being falsely just, uh, falsely accused or f protection from, you know, false judgment, uh, protection from death. You will often see that. Los tres, eh, los tres clavos de Jesucristo is a popular amulet in, in Hispanic cultures. You will see a lot of Hispanics or people who practice even hoodoo, they will often eh, either take iron eh, railroad spikes and they will bury one in the front door and one in the back door. This is to protect the home from malignant magic, from uh, people who enter with... Uh, you know, just people who might enter and bring something not positive into the house. The iron wards off that energy from entering in the house. And another thing that you will see is iron horseshoes hung above the door of people's houses. Now, there's a reason that the horseshoe is very protective. It will bring that positive energy into the house. And a lot of people ask me, which way should I put my my uh, horseshoe should I put it this way or this way well this way if you see this the iron well in our tradition if you see the uh, the horseshoe hung this way it is said that this is used more for a uh, for luck okay for luck and for protection and for abundance while if you see a horseshoe hung this way this is more to protect the home from an untimely death from fires from accidents so this way would be more for luck and this way would be used more for an untimely death fire protection of the home luck abundance bring positive energy and to ward off death to ward off a fire to ward off accidents within the home Oftentimes you will see people, uh, when they purchase a new home, they will place four iron nails around the corner outside of the house. Usually the iron is buried with a point down into the earth on the four corners of the house, starting from uh, where the sun rises or the east, and they go around the four corners of the house, uh, and they, with a point down, they bury it into the earth. Or you will see people take a railroad spike and they will uh, bury it. They will take the iron nail like this. They will pray over it, what they want to protect, you know, from, from entering into the house. They pray over it and they bury it into the ground. And it becomes like an antenna, like an antenna that attracts electric uh, electricity. Iron attracts negative mag magic, uh, black magic, evil intentions into the iron spike and the part that's in the earth will disperse it, will disperse that energy into the earth where it will become purified and cleansed and it will not enter into the home. So, like I said, oftentimes you will see people place one of these with a spike down in the front door and in the back door or four iron nails around either a business or a home. Again, praying each nail what they don't want to attract into the business or into the home or just for general protection. And again, it works like an antenna. When it's in the ground, it works like any antenna. It attracts the electricity like, you know, those, those, uh, what do you call those things? Those, those things that attract electricity, the electricity you got to view as magic, you know, black magic or evil intention. It gets 
stuck right here and it goes into the earth and it gets dispersed. The energy gets dispersed instead of entering into the home. So like a lightning rod, iron is used to attract that energy into the iron and disperse it within uh, the earth so it doesn't enter into a location. So iron is associated with the god of war, Mars, or the god of the underworld, Pluto. And early Greeks believed or said that iron was the bones of Typhoon. I think Typhoon is a titan. So iron was the bones of the titan Typhoon, while early Christians believed that iron was the bones of the devil. And if you look at Hispanic cultures or Hispanic folklore, you will often see a tale about an anima, an anima sola. His name is Juan Minero, Juan Minero or John the Miner, who is a spirit in hell or Hades who is for all eternity a mining a iron for the devil. That is his job. He will pass his whole life in eternity in hell mining iron for the devil. So you would often hear uh, legends of Juan Minero or John the Miner, which is an anima sola. And so it's for this very reason that iron is used as a talisman in sympathetic magic or fighting fire with fire. Uh, so in this sense, iron is used to ward off and protect against the very thing that is attributed to it. Iron is also used in forms of black magic or negative magic. You will see it's used for binding or trapping something within. And you will see often in many forms of magic where iron is used to bind or trap a spirit with inside a, a pot or a fetish. Uh, or you will see people who practice a negative or dark, darker forms of magic use iron to, to trap souls of a victim, a piece of the uh, soul of the victim within a certain location, whether it's a fetish, a doll, a pot. So it is also used for binding, controlling, and keeping an energy, an energy or a soul or a spirit within. In many cultures around the world, iron is the only metal that can bind uh, a dragon. So iron chains were often used to keep dragons uh, binded from the earth. No other metal could uh, bind dragons more so strongly than iron. And in the same sense, an iron uh, sword or an iron uh, piece of metal was the only uh, metal that could pierce through dragons. This is what cultures say, that could pierce through dragons and kill dragons. So if you saw in the beginning, I was showing you that I keep iron as wind chimes and I also keep iron spikes by the front and the back door or iron in general because it is said to ward off, protect the home from negative magic, from evil intentions to entering in the home. A lot of European witches use iron in their gardens or a iron in a wind chime to protect the home from elemental spirits. A lot of uh, cultures believe that fairies and a lot of elemental uh, spirits do not like iron because iron burns them. So I just wanted to close this section on iron and how I use iron and why I'm making these iron crosses. Just to show you a little bit of the magical and historical uh, uses in irons. Also, it was believed that the only thing that could kill vampires was sun, sunlight. But also, old cultures believed that when you killed a vampire and you buried it, you had to make sure that the casket that he was buried was lined with iron to keep the vampire from ever coming back. Uh, it would keep the vampire trapped inside that casket and from ever returning. So you'll see iron used in most cultures for binding and for protection, both for positive magic and both, both for positive and for negative magic. So now I'm going to charge and magnetize a, all these nails. You know, my candle ready. And the way I charge them is con la piedra de iman or lodestones. 
and you can see these are well fed this one I'm gonna feed a little bit more and the way I feed my piedra de iman is with iron fillings and I put it in and make sure it's nice and fed and there you go this one is nice and fed I'm gonna do to all three of them this one I'm just gonna put it into some iron filling and get them nice and fed like so I don't want to waste that see this one I'm gonna feed this one as well even though you can see it's alive it's magnetizing but still I'm gonna put it into the iron filling and just magnetize them or feed la piedra de man Try to get it out with one hand is not easy, but I did it. And there you go. Nice and fed. Okay. Esta la, the lodestone, la piedra de imán. And now I'm going to magnetize all these nails. And the way I do it is I take the lodestone and I pass it by the nails, you know, and I magnetize them. And as I magnetize them or magnetizing them, I like to pray or or bless them with a, a prayer or consecrate. Now, usually I'm going to use them by both hands, you know, because I, I need to hold them and then just keep uh, passing the lodestone over uh, the spikes as I uh, feed them, uh, consecrate them, and magnetize them. Consagrarlos y magnetizarlos. Criatura de hierro, yo te consagro y te magnetizo para que retires todas cosas malignas alrededor de mí. Criatura de hierro, yo te consagro y te magnetizo para que atraigas todas cosas buenas hacia mí. Alright, so now that these are magnetized, I'm going to take a break for the day. <laughs> I'm tired. Uh, but they're nice and magnetized. And tomorrow I'm going to start binding them. And I'm going to bind them with this right here. It's the, the rope that I use to make uh, the little bracelets. And this one's already opened. Um, but I don't want to get it dirty because my hands are dirty. So um, I'm going to use this to bind them. But I'm going to do that tomorrow because I'm kind of tired. Que los tres clavos y la Santa Cruz vayan delante de Jesús y que responda y hablen por mí y hablan de los corazones de los que sufren en contra mía. Me persino con los tres clavos y me abrazo a la cruz. Cruz santa, cruz digna, cruz divina. Yo te alabo y te bendigo por el Señor que murió en ti. No dejes llegar cosas malas cerca de mí. Que la cruz y la corona vayan siempre delante de mí y mueva los corazones de los que sufren en contra mía. Cristo viva, Cristo reina, Cristo de todos mis enemigos me defiende. El Padre me libere, el Hijo me guarde y el Espíritu Santo por nosotros hable. Ave María Purísima, sin pecado concebida, alabado sea el Santísimo Sacramento del altar. So I just want to show you that here are a hundred iron crosses. You can see that I have binded and prepared them uh, during this whole video. These are a hundred of them. And I will, you know, definitely make more when needed. But I just wanted to show you how I spiritually prepare a, the iron crosses. And I just want to say that iron is a symbol of strength and protection. Uh, iron is ruled by the elements of earth and fire. It repels evil spirits. It brings good fortunes. Uh, it opens the doors and locks the doors uh, to the crossroads. Uh, those crossroads which are, you know, in between the realm of the living and the dead. 
It's interesting to note that in the olden days, uh, keys and door locks were made with iron because iron was uh, believed to protect uh, even the keys and the door locks to protect the home from uh, evil entities or unwanted energies from entering into the home. So the doorway of a house was a symbol of the crossroads. And this is why we're using these cross, you know, these cross or this is why in spirituality we use these cross iron uh, nails. Iron nail stops the flow of negative uh, psychic energy and it is used in defense and deflective spiritual work as well as controlling and dominating uh, energies or unwanted vibration. So iron is often kept by the front door, buried a uh, by the entrance or hung by the entrance of the house. So here are just, I just wanted to show you what they look like. And they're nice and prepared and nice and blessed and charged, consecrated. A lot of people often ask me if I can prepare and bless iron spikes, which I have right here. These are getting harder for me to find. And often it costs me around just fifteen dollars, fifteen sixteen dollars, just to ship. Often, I if I'll, I'll show a link below of me preparing the iron spikes, and I, I prepare it in a cross, and then I always have another one separate. And it costs fifteen dollars just to just to ship that. Uh, it could get very expensive. So I was thinking of a more affordable way because a lot of people do want these uh, to get them out to, to clients or to people who want a iron crosses. And again, I'm going to show you, let me pick one right here. This is how they look like. Actually, yeah, I'm holding it wrong. Am I holding it wrong? There you go. This is what it looks like. This is what it looks like right there. Okay, you see that I've been preparing them. I will be uh, offering these, and the email for PayPal, it's only a PayPal. You have to send payment through PayPal, and here's the PayPal uh, email address. These I will be charging $15 each, um, and you see that I have, through the, during the whole video, I have prepared them, I have blessed them. They will come in a bag of three, such as this. Uh, I will have either red or blue, and the two are binding, and then I have one just pretty much just in the bag. So I will have red or blue, depending on what color I have. You can request it, and I will try my best to get you the color that you want, whether it's red or or blue or you can let me choose um, but these will be $15 each prepared consecrated blessed they are charged $15 that includes the shipping and handling uh, and a lot of people will charge way more if, for such a spiritual work like this you can uh, hang these by the entrance of the door you can keep these in a purse in a wallet these are good for protection, uh, to guard yourself from psychic negative energy, elemental spirits. So again, they are $15 with shipping and handling. And here is the email up there for my PayPal. That is where you're going to uh, send the payment. Please, uh, under the note of PayPal, send your uh, shipping address. Okay, and the name of the person you want these blessed and consecrated for. Each one will be consecrated. They are all blessed and consecrated, but I will blow in smoke and and add agua florida and spray rum and liquor on them before I ship them out to you. So please send the name for the person that you want, and I, I will try to accommodate. If you want red or blue, these are fifteen dollars. Just like that, it includes the uh, shipping and handling. I even thought of how much to charge, you know, in a spiritual essence. And 15 was a, it's a beautiful number because 15 is the, is a, is the number of manifestation. 
of a harmonious life. So it's the, the symbolic number of a manifestation of a harmonious life. 15 re, uh, refers to, you know, the spiritual, uh, the meeting or the interlocking of the spiritual and the uh, material. It also gives a steady flow of energy. And, a sort, and it's a source of power and strength. So 15 is what I'm charging for these recuerdos. If you are interested, just let me know. And I just want you to see what they look like before I close the video. Yeah, I'll pick this one right here. This is what they look like. But you will get in each package three nails. Okay. Two that are binded and one that is separated, which is like this. They will come just exactly like this. Like they will come in either blue or red. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, this is the red. They are binded by that red cord that I use to make, you know, these. But they're binded by the red cord. Uh, red is a very protective color. It's the color of fire. It cleanses. It removes. It's very fiery. Uh, so it, 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 it's very protective. It's warm. Blue is also a color of protection. So red and blue. Again, hang these by the door. Keep them by the wallet or in a wallet. Hang them on top of a door. Hang them outside a, by the doorway. Uh, so, and if you, if you have any questions, please email, uh, well, email me down here for if you want readings with Sancista Brujo Luis. This is a separate email for readings. The other one, which I'm going to show now, this one right here, is for if you're interested in purchasing one of these resguardos. And again, they are $15 with shipping and handling. This is Sancista Brujo Luis. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please hit that like button. Please subscribe. Please share my videos with uh, fellow you know, people. Um, I just want to get these out to people because a lot of people are interested in these uh, railroad spikes. It's just expensive. Just shipping and handling by themselves are $15 just to ship those. So I wanted to make sure that a lot of people get them and they're getting harder for me to come by. They really are. So I, I get these in nature's. I, I don't purchase these. So they're getting harder. And I, a lot of people ask me about the iron nails and if I can prepare a guardo for them. And I was thinking about of a more affordable way to get them out to more people. So again, also hit that bell button for notifications when f uh, future videos come out. This is Ancista Brujo Luis. I hope you enjoyed this video. These are a hundred that I have made. Okay. Uh, 15 per per package if you want to of course it's $30 uh, but please leave the name of the person who you want these blessed with because I'm going to bless them at the end for each ind individual by a blowing smoke on them and spraying them down with rum and adding a little bit more agua florida more perfumes oiling them down Sancista Brujo Luis Santo Sanse, I hope you enjoyed this video. This video is long enough. Many blessings to everybody.